If I were made supreme ruler of Lucasfilm with infinite power, but I also limited myself to doing things that are realistic and would help the Star Wars brand, there is one thing that I would start the process on tomorrow. One thing that I think would honor Star Wars legends while making money for the Star Wars brand. I'm going to discuss my grand plan in today's video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. Definitely a bit of a different one today. I'm going to be just throwing up some Halo footage or something for much of this video because to be honest, there's not a lot of relevant stuff that I can put in front of your eyeballs. So if you want to treat this like a podcast or something else, I won't be offended. But we're talking about one of my big ideas that I would love to see happen for the Star Wars brand and that I think people would really get behind. A way to keep Star Wars Legends alive while not necessarily fighting against canon or taking away resources from other bits of story development. So we'll be talking about that today, but I want to start off with a bit of an explanation about Star Wars Legends and why I'm such an advocate of this idea. So I'll put a timestamp up on the screen if you want to skip all of that, but let's get started. So Star Wars Legends was a huge part of my Star Wars fandom growing up. My first ever video game was Shadows of the Empire. In elementary school, I made a poster for the Young Jedi Knights book series if it were a movie, and I fell in love with the countless books, comics, video games, you name it. What's more though, there are pretty big parts of Star Wars canon which are based heavily off of Star Wars legends, either directly or indirectly. For example, Grand Admiral Thrawn is one of the most prominent, I'd say non-movie characters, at least for now, in Star Wars canon, and of course he was a Legends first character. You have other stories like The Rise of Skywalker, which are almost remakes of Dark Empire. Even the sequel trilogy as a whole has the same general plot structure. So it's important to me that these foundational works are honored and that material, which to be honest, meant a lot to Star Wars fans for a long time, continues to be honored. That takes us to my proposal, a reasonable, I think, option that could be used to not only recognize Star Wars Legends and its potential, but also, most importantly for Disney and Lucasfilm as a business, to make make money. And what I mentioned reasonable, there are obviously things that fans want which I don't think are likely. People always ask me, will Disney or Lucasfilm start publishing new Star Wars Legends material? Honestly, I don't think so for a variety of reasons, probably chiefly that they don't want to compete with themselves and that there may be fan confusion for non-hardcore Star Wars fans going into the bookstore and not recognizing that there are two different timelines. There is also the issue that when it comes to recognizing past works or trying to monetize past works, there is not as as much, I think, earning potential, and where everything is basically an opportunity cost, I've tried to think of something that wouldn't take away resources from other projects. So, for example, a live-action Thrawn movie would be taking away resources from The Mandalorian. Yet there is still earning potential. In the past couple of years, we've seen Star Wars start to re-monetize some Legends properties. They've begun releasing the Essential Legends Collection, which not only republishes existing novels, but actually saw the creation of several new unabridged audiobooks, which was huge. My idea is a step up from that, and here it is simply. If you're a fan of DC Comics, especially like Batman, Superman, or the Justice League, you've probably seen the very popular animated films that they've made. These are generally called the DC Universe original movies, or animated original movies. They've been running since 2007, and what's interesting to me is their method of production and release. These are clearly fairly low budget. The first movie, Superman Doomsday, had a budget of $3.5 million, where the first season of The Mandalorian had a budget of $100 million. But they're also very well loved by fans, they're typically successful commercially, and they allow DC to tell a story, but there's not necessarily, I think, the same expectations of continuity or connecting to an overall story, although many of the films are connected. There's actually a list on the Wikipedia page of which continuity all the films stand in, and you'll see that there is is a DC animated universe continuity, but many of the films are also separate continuities or even standalone. Many of the films are also remakes of existing DC titles. The most famous one I would guess is probably The Killing Joke, which by the way was in 2016, over an hour long and still kept the budget between $4 million. But I think you guys can probably see where my idea is going. Let's take the most famous and well-loved Star Wars Legends stories and animate them in this style. 
it honestly just makes too much sense. For one, these are definitely more niche films, so they're not going to necessarily compete against other releases for fans, but if you go to the most popular stories especially, you'll definitely make money and you can bring subscribers to Disney+. Plus. Like, this seems like it would fit so well on Disney+, Plus, alongside, well, the other less mainstream Star Wars content. You're also free to tell the stories artistically, basically, in whatever way you want, without having to slave yourself to continuity. You could very easily have a trio of three 70-minute movies about the Thrawn trilogy. That gives you a lot more room than other mediums, but allows you to stick to the interesting stuff while also putting a new spin on the story. You could also very easily tie this material into the sort of new Star Wars Legends collections that we're seeing. You could do some cross-promotion. There's a lot of money to be made here. Fans are rediscovering or discovering for the first time the Thrawn trilogy every day, and it's such a great way to get people buying your books, buying your merchandise and there just needs to be more of it. Right now Disney Plus also needs content and you could produce these for relatively cheap. Maybe you go a bit more expensive than the 3.5 million dollar budget of something like The Killing Joke or maybe you don't. That's the beauty of it. There are so many different ways that you could run with this all of which I believe would make money without having to worry about the same things that major Star Wars productions have. Continuity, not being able to tell a closed story. Like it's tough for The Mandalorian or even the movies to tell a story with an ending point point because you always want to be hinting at future content. I don't know. For me personally, Star Wars Visions really opened my eyes to the possibilities of non-canon Star Wars storytelling. I found myself really enjoying those stories and I even went into books like Ronin and like that a lot more than some new canon content. I think there's definitely a lot of hunger for Star Wars Legends material and I think this would be the best way to not only satiate that hunger but to make money and also honor the source material without having to jeopardize any current or upcoming releases without having to take resources away. I don't know whether WB would be willing to do Star Wars stuff. Probably. If not, Lucasfilm could get any number of studios to do it, even their own in-house studio. I mean, obviously it's going to take some work to adapt the source material, but the good thing is, if it does work, you've got so much that could be moved to the small screen. You could do the Thrawn trilogy, you could do the Thrawn duology, you could do the Yuzhan Vong War, you could do Dark Empire, you could do stuff for Young Jedi nights. You could do any of the little stories in between. Go back to the Old Republic. But I don't know. Maybe my idea is off. Maybe I'm out of line. Maybe I'm overestimating the amount of people who would watch something like this. Let me know your thoughts down below. Till next time though, guys. Have a good one. Be safe and may the Force be with you.